Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back. My name is Nadia Sands. This, of course, is Learn How to Edit Stuff, and today we're gonna be talking about useful tips and tricks for editing music videos. Somebody sent me a music video. They were curious about some of the effects that were used in that video, so I watched it, and then I watched a bunch of other music videos, and I kind of saw very similar things in each video that I was watching. So today's video is going to be the five most common things that I saw across all these music videos and how you can do them today at home. All right, without further ado, here is the short clip that I created kind of demoing all the different effects that we're going to be learning about in today's lesson. Roll the clip. And now you are going to learn how to do it yourself. All right, before we jump in and get editing, the five things that we're gonna be covering today are jump cuts or stutter cuts. That's when you have a really long piece of footage and you kind of just jump cut through it to the beat of the music. We're gonna go over transitions, flash effects, and chromatic aberration. The ever coveted reverse shot, which is basically when you take footage that you have and just reverse it to make it look cool. And of course, the music video scribble effect, which is actually very easy to do and not very time consuming. And it looks really cool. You've seen it before, you're gonna see it again today and other places. Let's open up Adobe Premiere because we are getting started right now. All right, guys, I've got Premiere open and down in my timeline, I've got the music video that I showed you guys at the beginning of this video. And we're just gonna quickly break down the first five seconds of this video because all the effects we're gonna be talking about today actually all happen within the first five seconds. So let's take a look. All right, starting from the first clip, we got some kind of vignetted distortion kind of happening right around the outsides of this video, a little bit of chromatic aberration to lead us into the charge. Then right here, we got the lighting effects. The sun is getting brighter, and then it is going back down to zero and then getting brighter again on all of the snare hits. Then moving in, we've got some more chromatic aberration right here that's kind of happening on some of the kick drums as we go farther, another lighting effect, and then we're getting into some more chromatic aberration here, boom, boom and then she spins. We've got the music video scribble effect happening, kind of circling around her, a little bit more chromatic aberration, then reversing that shot. That's the reverse that I was talking about. So she spins around and then we are just reversing in double speed to kind of have her go back to her starting position. And then we've got a nice zoom transition to kind of get us into the next shot. So this is covering all five of those things. The jump slash stutter cuts, the transitions, the lighting, chromatic aberration, the reverse shot, and the music video scribble. These are the five most commonly used things that I saw when I was doing my research. And what I first wanna say when you're jumping into a music video edit, you need to have some sort of musicality and music rhythm and knowledge when you're editing this because a lot of this is time sensitive and time-based based on the music track that you're using to cut the music video to. You need to listen for all those little intricate rhythms because that's gonna cue in your head to do something specific with the footage, like the jump cut slash stutter cut. When it kind of quickly cuts through the music, you're gonna wanna cut a stutter cut on those music points. I don't know if I'm making a lot of sense. I'd rather just show you because explaining it is way too difficult. So let's jump into the jump jump cut slash stutter cut first. All right, guys, right now I am just scrubbing through the raw video clip of this girl dancing with her headphones near the pool. You can see that it's just a long clip in slow-mo. She's jamming along in her headphones, but that's the clip. I'm playing it in real time right now. Nothing really crazy going on. It's just a nice standard slow-mo shot of this chick dancing near the pool. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna jump cut through this entire clip in the span of four beats on our music track. So let's listen to the music track. So you can hear the rhythm. It's kind of going boom, cat, cat, do cat. It's like a very like drum and bassy kind of rhythm in this. We're not gonna get into music theory. Let's just keep going. So what I'm gonna do is just start at the very beginning of this clip and I'm gonna set an in point and I'm just gonna drag it onto my timeline and just drop it down where my first hit happens. And then on my second hit in the music, I'm gonna cut and zoom out and kind of go somewhere farther into the clip, like maybe right about here. And then I'm just gonna pull this back and meet it up with my first cut. And then for the next cut, I'm gonna do the same thing. Cut right on the next beat and go a little bit farther ahead, maybe right about there. And then on the kick right here, we'll go to the next part. Right about there looks nice. And then on the very last snare, we'll go all the way to the very end. And there you go. That is the jump cut sequence in its most basic form. Oh, 
So essentially what we're doing is we're taking that whole long clip and we're just quickly cutting through it in five beats that are kind of tagged to the music of the song. That is the jump cut sequence. And the stutter cut sequence is very similar to this where you take one little part of the video and you just repeat frames really fast so it kind of makes a little stuttery, juddery kind of movement in the video and it looks really cool. So let's do that real quick. All right, so we're gonna do it right for this last hit. What I recommend doing is actually speeding the video up by a considerable amount by hitting Control R on your keyboard. And I'm gonna turn this from speed 100 to speed 1000, and that's gonna make it really fast. And then I'm just gonna go over one, two keyframes, trim this back, and then just copy and paste. One, two, three. Maybe we'll just do that. So now it's gonna kind of stutter at the end. And then on the very last clip, we're gonna turn it back to speed 100 so it can just continue on as normal. So this right here is the stutter cut and this whole thing that we just did previous to that is the jump cut and that is used a lot, a lot, a lot in every music video that I saw. It's just kind of cutting through on the beats of the music to kind of rhythmically let it have some character and then that way you can get through all of your footage in a little bit more of an exciting way than just throwing it on your timeline and letting it play out as usual. That's kind of boring. So this at least gives it character and makes it really gel well with the song. All right, the next thing I wanna talk about is the transitions. The one that you guys probably saw first and the one that we're gonna go over right now is the kind of zoom in and out transition where it zooms out of the video and then it kind of hits on the back end. So you can see it's zooming out, it's pulling out of the next clip right before it, and then it's doing a little like camera shake down here at the end. Now I would like to tell you guys that I made this from scratch. I really would. I would love to tell you that I did this all myself, but I'm not gonna tell you that because it's absolutely not true. One of the biggest things that I can recommend to you guys, especially for transitions, is to have something in your pocket ready to go all the time. And that's why I would recommend using the Handy Seamless Transition Pack for Premiere Pro. It is stupid easy, it is very cheap for everything that you get in it, and it allows you to just work, drag and drop onto your timeline, and just keep going and experiment with a lot of different really cool transitions. And it gives you some chromatic aberration stuff in there too, but I'm gonna show you guys how to do that yourself. But for transitions, 100%, I would check out the Handy Seamless Transitions Pack for Premiere Pro. The link is in the video description for you to go and buy it right now. It is one of my most used elements in every single project that I have. I always have those transitions ready to go at the drop of a hat because they are so good and they are so easy to use and it just allows me to keep working. But we're gonna demo that right now real quick for you guys. All right, so at the end of our little jump cut sequence, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to pull out to that wide shot. So let me just grab that wide shot right from here. And we are gonna throw that right at the end of our timeline. There you go. So now it's cutting to the wide shot and what we wanna do is we wanna transition between these two clips right here. So very simply guys, check this out. I'm gonna to go to my handy seamless transitions folder. I'm going to go down to the bottom where it says zoom. We are going to go to hit and I'm going to zoom out hit and I'm just gonna drag and drop that right onto my timeline and the two first clips in these transitions should line up with the cut in your footage. And now check this out guys. There you go. Now we've added a zoom out transition and we literally just dragged and dropped it straight onto our timeline. And now we have a very fast, very cool, very professional looking transition. And it took us absolutely no time at all. Now, yes, you can make this from scratch. This is not a proprietary transition that people are gonna call you out for using or whatever. This is just a very simple concept inside of Premiere, but for you to execute on it, it's gonna take a long time. So basically what you're doing is you're just paying to save time. And if you've watched my videos before, you understand. Time is money, money is time. You wanna save as much time as possible so you can get the idea from your head into the computer and just keep cranking out. So, Handy Seamless Transition Pack for Premiere Pro, link in the video description below. I highly, highly, highly recommend it. If you trust me, you'll go and pick it up. I promise it's worth it. So if you guys didn't wanna use the zoom transition over here on the side, you see we have a bunch of different transitions, including some chromatic aberrations. We have fades, flares, glitches, motion shake, perspective shifts, spins, splits, warps. I mean, this thing has it all and you can kind of just demo them and play with them as much as you want and you can get some really cool transition results for your music video. But we're not gonna spend a whole lot of time talking about handy seamless transitions because we are moving on to the flash effects and chromatic aberration effects. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete this out of my timeline and we're gonna make the sun kind of flare up just like we saw in the original video on all of these snare hits. So there's three snare hits right here. What I want you guys to do is come down here to this new item button and we're going to create an adjustment layer. 
You guys can click OK. It'll make it the resolution of your project. And then go ahead and drop that adjustment layer right on your timeline and just kind of make it the size of one of your videos. Go on over to the front of this thing, click on the adjustment layer, come over to your effects tab, and we are going to type in levels and then drop the video effects adjust levels straight onto your adjustment layer and now come up to your effect controls. And what we're gonna do is set a keyframe for the RGB white input level right at the beginning of this, set a keyframe, and we're just gonna crank this down to, I don't know, maybe 170 looks good. Base it on the footage that you're using because this number will be different depending on how bright your footage already is. But for me, I kind of like right around the 150 to 170 range right there at the beginning. And then all we're going to do is go over one, two, three, four, five keyframes and then turn this back up to 255. And what that's going to do is it's just going to flash for five frames, just like this. And since there's three snares, I can just drop that here on the second snare. And then again on the third snare and because i'm cutting on all the beats right here these will all line up with the video underneath it and now check this out guys super easy all we did was drop levels on there make one keyframe adjustment and now by holding alt and clicking and dragging you can just keep copying this all throughout your music video and use it at your heart's content and you know you can overuse this effect and i understand that the video i showed you at the beginning is not the best example for this because I was just trying to pack it all in in a very short amount of time, but you can kind of overuse this. So use it sparingly. I recommend using it on a snare because inherently the snare is kind of a cat. It like pops. So you want the color and the light to kind of pop on that snare. So you can do this with color instead of light. You can use chromatic aberration, which I will show you how to do right now. Very easy. So I'm going to delete all these out of here. And now I'm going to delete this levels adjustment off of that adjustment layer. And instead of typing in levels, type in VR digital and VR digital glitch will come up under immersive video. Go ahead and drop that on your adjustment layer. We're gonna go to the very beginning and you see it kind of like really messes up and glitches out the frame. That's cool and all, but we don't really want that. So what we're gonna do is come over here to the distortion tab and kind of twirl that open. And we're going to turn down everything except for color distortion. So geometry down, distortion complexity all the way down, distortion rate all the way down to zero. Have all of these be zero. You can't actually turn distortion complexity down to zero and it will have to stay at one. And then what we're gonna do is turn our color distortion all the way up to 100. And now what we're gonna do guys is just use the master amplitude slider to do exactly what we did with the lighting right here, except we're gonna do the keyframes just a little bit different. So right at the beginning, set a keyframe for master amplitude and turn it down to zero. Then go over one keyframe and turn it up to 100 and then go over one, two, three, four, five keyframes and turn it back down to zero. So what it's gonna do is it's gonna start off at nothing, immediately go up to the chromatic aberration level and then we are slowly gonna go back to normal right at the end. And you can use it the exact same way that we did the snares. So you can put it in all the same places and now check this out. And you've got a very nice little chromatic aberration effect that we made in less than 30 seconds. And this is a very useful tool to use on different hits of the music as well. Again, use it sparingly, use it where you think it's appropriate because you can overuse pretty much everything that we're gonna talk about today. So it's kind of up to you on what you wanna use it for and how often you wanna use it. All right, chugging along to the reverse shot. What we're gonna do is we're gonna get rid of all of this stuff and I'm going to demo the reverse shot for you right now. Up here in our B-roll, we've got this chick. She's dancing, she's having a great time and she spins all the way around looking very nice. So what we're gonna do is just drag and drop that right onto our timeline. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click Control R on my keyboard to turn it to real time. So I'm gonna turn it up to 200% instead of 100%. And then that way she will actually turn at the rate that she's supposed to. I'm just gonna throw this back over here. So now she is making a turn. And then right here, we're gonna have it reverse. So just cut your clip right there, delete the back half, Alt and click and put it right next to itself then control R to bring up the time properties. We're going to hit reverse speed and we're going to turn this up to 1000%. So now she's gonna whip back around really quickly. And now what I can do is I can just duplicate the track again. I can hit control R on the keyboard, unreverse the speed, put it back at 200. And now she will spin around the right way. Then she will reverse spin quickly and then she will spin again exactly the same way. And this is just a nice use of the same shot, but just quickly reversing it and speeding up the clip so that she spins opposite direction and then continues on. So check this out. 
and then you would theoretically cut right there and just keep moving on. But this is just a nice way to reuse the same footage over and over again. And the same thing applies to punching in and out of the footage as well. If you don't have enough B-roll, you can kind of reuse the B-roll that you have in very different ways. So now I can just punch in on this first clip right here. And you're just kind of making it more exciting using what you already have in your arsenal. So there are a couple different ways that you can do this. Punching in is one of them and reversing is another one that works really, really well. I highly recommend using the reverse shot. It's one of my favorite things to do actually, even not in music videos. I just like reversing things and seeing how it looks. It's a nice little tool. I don't know, take it and run with it. What do you want me to say? All right, guys, and last but not least, we are going to take a look at the scribble effect, which we are going to do in Adobe After Effects. So go ahead, open After Effects, and whatever the clip is that you want to scribble on, just kind of already have it ready to go. As you can see, she is spinning around and then she is dancing. And we're gonna add some music video scribbles to this and it is very, very simple. All I want you guys to do is double click on your video layer and it will open it up in a new layer window, then come right up here to the paintbrush tool and make sure that that is selected. And then that will open up some panels over here on the right hand side. If you don't have all of these panels, very quickly go up to window workspace and make sure that all panels is selected for you. I have my own custom one, which says Nadia and Sands, but for you, you're gonna use all panels and that should in theory, put all of these panels on the right hand side. And there are two panels that we're going to be looking at today. One is paint and one is brushes. Let's start with paint. If you click on the paint tab, it will kind of bring up all these parameters. Mainly what we're gonna be working with here is the color of the paint and a couple little things down in here. So make sure that your mode is set to normal and make sure your duration is set to custom and make sure this little tiny number right next to custom says two frames. And that's gonna make this effect a lot easier for you to manage over time. And then you're gonna go ahead and select the color that you want to use. So we're gonna use a nice red to match her bathing suit. Looking good right there. And now I can be done with this. I'm gonna go over to the brushes tab now and you can kind of pick what brush you want. You can make it a circle. You can make it kind of an oblong oval rectangle and you can change the diameter, the angle, all of the stuff down here. So you guys can use kind of whatever you want. I like to use a little diagonal kind of squished circle brush. I feel like that gives the best result for doing like very like flowy animations like this. Uh, it's gonna look pretty jank at the beginning but we're gonna add some effects to it to make it look cooler and trust me, it'll be awesome. So what do I want you guys to do? is start painting on your video, whatever you want. I know that she is spinning, so I'm gonna kind of make it look like it's going around her body in the spin to really sell the spin a little bit more. So what I'm gonna do is just start off my spin, just like that. And then by hitting control and the right arrow on the keyboard, it is going to advance to the next frame. I can see my previous paint stroke right there, and then I'm just gonna add on to it. And I'm gonna add on to it from here, and I'm gonna have it go all the way around her head, and then maybe I'm going to start the next one here. One frame over. I'm going to continue following the same line, just like this. Boom. And it's gonna continue around her, and then this one's gonna come out from her shoulder. And then on this frame, what I'm gonna to start to do is start to lessen the top and keep extending the bottom. And you'll see what I mean in just a minute. So I'm gonna go about halfway through this first stroke like that, and then pick up this stroke from here, pick up this stroke from here, and then start our very last one all the way around and go over to the next frame. I'm not gonna to touch the top. I'm only gonna to touch the second stroke and this will make a lot more sense in just a second. I absolutely promise you that. We're gonna keep going here, boom. Now we're gonna go about halfway through the second stroke, do the third stroke in full, do this last one in full, and we're gonna go off to the side. And now pick up the stroke from here, pick up the stroke from here, go over one frame, about halfway through there, a full one here. And this does not have to be perfect, guys. It doesn't have to be perfect at all. You can make this as messy as you want, and the messier it looks, the better it actually will be in the long run because it will look a lot cooler once we're done. So I'm just going over frame by frame and I'm clicking and clicking and I'm just kind of tracing this line out to the outside edge of the frame, just like that. So if we watch this guys, check it out. You see it's happening very fast. And the reason why I was starting to use the paint stroke about halfway through the stroke, I'm going frame by frame here, is I want it to come on in a whirl. So she's whirling, she's whirling, and then the whirl starts to wear off. And then it starts kind of going towards the bottom to make it look like it swirls around her and it's not a long infinite ribbon. It just kind of swirls around her and then leaves frame. And that's kind of like a weird 
thing that I figured out over time, but I'm sharing it with you guys. Don't get confused. I promise it's really easy. Let's watch it one more time. There you go. She swirls around and that's it. All right, looking pretty good. So now what we're gonna do is come back up here to our composition and we're just going to click into our composition, which will put us back out into the composition. Now what I want you guys to do is take that video clip, hit control D on your keyboard to duplicate it, click on the bottom most clip, come up to your effect controls and delete the paint effect. Then on your top track, what I want you to do is click on that paint effect and click the box next to paint on transparent. And what that will do is it will isolate the layers that we just did onto its own alpha layer. So you can then export that out of After Effects and drop it into Premiere and use it as an effect instead of baking it into your footage. So this top track is our scribble. The bottom track is our video. So we can kind of see what we're doing. And we're just going to add a couple more quick effects to this to make it look stellar. The first of which being glow. So why don't you come over here to your effects and presets and type in glow and drop this stylized glow right here on our paint layer. And what we're gonna do is just kind of play with the threshold a little bit, just so it's glowing a nice red there. And the glow radius, we're gonna increase that a little bit to really make it look like it's glowing. And the glow intensity, we can turn up a little bit, which will turn the color more pink or red respectively. So I'm gonna turn that up just a little bit to give it a nice glow. And the last thing we're gonna add to this is turbulent displace. Distort, Turbulent, Displace, drop that right on your layer here and you'll see it kind of like wonkifies your stroke layer, which is exactly what we want. We're going to turn the displacement from Turbulent to Turbulent Smoother. We are going to turn the amount up a little bit. Maybe we'll make it about 60 and you can start messing with the size. There's no exact numbers for this, but the lower you get on the size, the more rigid and jagged the Turbulent Displace will be. So I kind of like to make it, you know, electrified a little bit to some degree. Looking like that is pretty good. And we can turn the complexity up as well to really kind of like warp and make it look more electrified. Again, this is gonna be up to your discretion. You guys can do whatever you want. That looks good for me. The last thing we're gonna do is come over here to our blend modes. Now I'm gonna turn this from normal to add. See what that looks like. That looks pretty cool. I'm gonna turn it to overlay. See what that looks like. And I'm gonna try screen. Those are the three that I would try first and foremost because they all will do different things. I actually liked add for this. And ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we have created a cool little electrified spinning music video paint animation in After Effects. And it was very, very simple for us to do. The last thing that we need to do is export this out of After Effects. So I'm going to turn off my bottom video layer, then come right up here to File, Export, Add to Render Queue. Then under Output Module, once you go ahead and click on what's there, we're gonna change some settings right here. Format is going to be QuickTime. Channels, you're gonna switch that from RGB to RGB plus alpha. And then the Format Options, we're going to change this to QuickTime ProRes 4444. If you don't have ProRes 4444, you can use animation. It will work just the same. So I'm going to use animation for those of you that don't have ProRes. Click OK. Make sure it's RGB and alpha again. Click on OK. Tell it where you want it to save and hit render. There you go, we're done. And now if we navigate to the folder in which we saved that effect to, and you will see that the scribble that we just did came in as an alpha layer. So we can just drag and drop that straight into Premiere and drop it right on top of our video. Very, very simple. Now you will have to redo the blend modes in Adobe Premiere. So just remember what you did. This one we did add. I'll have to change it back to add in Premiere. I just wanted to see what it looked like on top of the video in After Effects. So I kind of knew what to do in Premiere, if that makes sense. The blend mode doesn't transfer over in the alpha file. Was that confusing? It's a little confusing, but it makes sense. Trust me, I've, I've, I've been around the block. Woo! That was a whirlwind. Ladies and gentlemen, we did it. You completed the five most used music video effects tutorial and you learned how to do everything yourself. It was amazing. I'm so proud of you. If you ever got confused from this video, just go ahead, rewind and watch it through again. I promise all this stuff is very easy to do. You just have to go out and do it. But just to recap, because we always do, we did the jump cut slash stutter cut on our video, cutting through an entire piece of B-roll over the course of four or five beats of the song, just to kind of cut through it and make it nice and rhythmic. We also looked at some transitions. The Handy Seamless Transition Pack for Premiere Pro is the one I 100% recommend. Without a doubt, there are no others. Link is in the video description below for you to get yours today. Using my link does help me a little bit. So why don't you go ahead and use it? Make me a happy guy. You're gonna be a happy guy or girl because the transitions are amazing. 
We also checked out some flash effects and chromatic aberration effects that we made ourselves with the levels adjustment and the VR distort adjustment. We played some clips forward and then we played them in reverse just to make it a little bit more playful and a little bit more music video style with the editing. And we also tried out the ever coveted scribble effect that you've seen in music videos before. We drew it on with some paint, added some glow, added some turbulent displays and really made it look electrified and cool. And you guys can play with that effect all day long, just follow the steps of duplicating it on top of the video so you have a nice alpha layer that you can bring into Premiere later, drag right onto your timeline, and then you're good to go. Again, if you got confused at any point during this video, please, for the love of God, go back and rewind and watch it. Don't just glance over it, don't blow by it. Actually sit down and try to learn this stuff, try to dissect what we did today so you can edit better, you can edit a better music video, and you will start to get more and more refined results over time, I promise. It's not that difficult. Well, that about does it today for me, guys. I really hope that you enjoyed this video and you learned a little something today, as confusing or not confusing as it may be. I still hope that you learned something today. I enjoyed hanging out with you. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, go ahead and give it a thumbs up down below. And if you haven't, make sure you subscribe to the channel and also check out the last video that you missed. We do them here weekly at Learn How to Edit Stuff. This video today, the one that you're just now watching, was submitted by one of you guys. So if you have a good idea, drop a comment in the comment section below. Subscribe, check out the last video, and I will see you next time.